Agamara. Today's daf is daf kuf alav. This is second day Yom Tov Rosh Hashanah, and uh, we're continuing learning about what exactly is included in a sale. And we talked about uh, if there's a garden behind another garden, what your rights are. And now we're talking about uh, sort of a, a, a cemetery. In those days, a cemetery was it's called a it's called kuchen. The custom was. The custom was that they used to bury entire families and they would have like an underground cave, you know, under the ground. And you would have built in the wall slots called cooking. They would build, it's called a crypt. They would build these slots and it's inside these slots, they would put in coffins. And, um, and they would measure each coffin or the, the slot that they put it in, the cavity in the wall would basically be an armor wide and four amas deep. One amma wide and four amas deep. And the argument is going to be, so when a person says, I want to buy this area to put in a, a crypt, what exactly, how, what size area do you have to give that person? So that's basically what we're learning throughout this period, what, what's included. Why four amas? Interesting argument between Rashi and the Rashbam, and, this, and the Rashbam, and sorry, Rashi and Tesis, Rashbam and Tesis, there are a few places Rashi and Tesis, and that is, according to Rashi, a person's height is four amas. The shoulder is three amas, and then you add the head is four amas. And Tayson learns that all up, it's um, it's three amas. And over there, in the Gemara, so you put your hand above your head. That's when you get to four amas. So, um, and four amas make it easy to go in and out in the length of because you also have the coffin that has to go when you need a bit more space. But interesting, it says in one of the, I saw, I'm afraid, it brings down from a medrash. So they're both right. When a person's alive, don't ask me to explain this. When a person's alive, you're three amas tall. But when a person passes away, their body stretches out and becomes four. And then Medrash makes a whole calculation regarding how much children, why it had to be the tree, the certain height, 50 amas and all that, to hang the 10 children, makes a cheshman and, and haman, and each one has four amas, and then you have a space between each one, and each one hung, you know, like vertically, one on top of the other. But that's how you need a 50 amas tree. So when they, even though, you know, Haman's kids were short, but it's also a midget, but they stretch out when they pass away. That's something else. No, the lachsen is a lach of four amas. You're in Hichel Shabbos. You have four amas, but the Ramah writes that you have four amas, and then you have the alachsen, the diagonal of four amas, which you're allowed to carry on Shabbos, not just four amas, but the diagonal of four amas. Okay, let's look at Mishnah. The Mishnah is not the Kufa base. It says the Mishnah. Now, there are diagrams in the Gemara, and the diagrams will be very helpful to understand this Gemara. Or picture it in our minds. Mishnah. I saw you a place last in Lake Kaver to build a there cemetery. Except from your friend, an area, a gift to, in order to build a cemetery. So therefore, you'll make one wing or one side. Imagine you're walking in one direction. So on one side, you're going to make, a, you're coming in from the east. So the right side, north, you're going to have a, a, a wall. And in that wall, you're going to have um, space to put in a number of kuchin, how many. So this area will be four amas by six amas. Now, on that wall on the right side, if it's six amas long, four amas deep, six amas long, six amas long, how many kuchen can you put in? So what we say is that every kuch, every single slot is one amma wide, and the gap between one slot and the next should be an amma, otherwise it'll crumble. If you make it too narrow, then the wall, will, will all things will fall apart. So if it's six amas long, you can put in four kuchen, uh, you can put in three kuchen, three, that's uh, three amas, an amas gap in between each one of those. So that's another two amas, makes it five. And then you have a half a amma from the end of this, of the of the most right coffin, you know, hole to the wall. And then another half amma to the left. And then when you're going to build, if you build any uh, <coughs> cavities in the wall in the back, you also leave a half amma gap. So basically it's an amma between this kuch and that kuch gives enough room for the wall to be strong. Shouldn't fall apart. So you have three on the, uh, you'll have three on the right side. Okay. Um, and you'll, you'll have an, an eight, and you'll total have eight. Why? You'll have three on the right wall, because it's six hours long. You'll have uh, three 
gray on your left side because you're going to be three uh, six hours long because they're both the same length. So you have three and three, and then the wall opposite of the entrance of this uh, of this um, cemetery, the wall the opposite of it is only four amas wide. If it's four amas wide, you can put two kuch in there. That's two amas. One amma in, in between, so that's three. And then you have a half amma on each corner. So that's a total of three. In the, uh, you'll have two in the back wall, three on each side, a total of eight kuchen. That's the view of the Tanakama. Um three on your right side, shalosh mekan three on your left side. V'shnayim connect them to the opposite wall. Nothing on the entrance when you the area you're walking in. Nothing there. The kuchin erkan arba amas. How long are they? They're four amas long. I just throw where the machlek it is. And 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 v'rumen. I remember saying the other way around. Rashi and Ram hold that a person is three amas, and then the hands lifting up is makes it four. And Tzadik is the one who says that it's four amas. And in defense of Rashi, they say that met the quote on Medrash that I told you. Um, but here, Rashi says clearly the reason why you four amas is for the extra space for the the coffin itself. And the room and Sheva, and how high should sorry? That's clearly for the order. Maybe in Shalim they didn't use the like three. The room and Sheva, and the height of each cavity should be seven fachim. Six is what you need for the coffin. And then you need a Paseach Tefach. We want to have a, 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 a gap of a Tefach, according to the Rajbam and, and Rashi and Baruchas of Yutesh. We want to have a gap of a Tefach so that the Tumah is contained. The Gemara and Baruchas of Yutesh says, Medalgin Hayinu al Gabe Aroinus. We used to jump on top of the Aroinus. Koinim said it. I, Lechera, how can you go there? Because there was a gap of a Tefach. So if there's a gap of a tefach, why would they, um, the the rabbanon still forbade it? Because roiv aroinus have this gap of a tefach, so the tumor is contained inside the box. But um, since there are some that are not, the rabbanon said you shouldn't go over, over the uh, over the grace. But the gemara there says medalgin hayin lagabe aroinus likas malkil yisro to go mekabel greet a king. The loyrak malki Yisrael, a little malki akum, even a non-Jewish king. Im Yiske Yavke Mashiach will come, will appreciate the grandeur of Mashiach. So um, that's what Rashi was on. Tesha disagrees. Tesha, anyway, Tesha says it must be talking about that the box on the side also has an opening. Otherwise, if it's a closed box, even the gap of a tefah makes it worse. If it's less than a tefach, then where the body is, that's where the tumor goes up, and that's it. If there's more than a tefach and it's a closed box, according to Tesis, then the entire box generates to me, even the parts of the box where there's no mace lying there. So, um, anyway, bottom line is you need seven tefach. Also, because the coffin takes up space. In fact, I don't even know how you have a gap of a tefach. If a person's, if um, you know, you need the, the, the thickness of the of the coffin, unless they made sure that with the coffin, including the mace, was exactly six tefach. And they made sure to lift a gap of a tefach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The said, I, I know in inches. The machlek is either 22 inches or 18 inches. And yeah. another day it says 23. That's why not three days. Which is 22, I guess. You work it out, yeah. Yeah, which is pretty tall for a person. You told me I'm 180 centimeters. I'm I'm exactly six foot. I hope I still have it. Hope I didn't start shrinking yet. Oh, let's continue. Uh, said the mission further. The rach and shisha, and also they're an arm wide. So this is what it is. Every cavity was an arm wide. Four amas long, and that's how you get to the calculation of having if the if the wall was six amas long, that's how come you have three cavities in the wall there because each with each cavity was wide an amma. The gap between one cavity and the next was an amma, so that's already five, and then you have half amma on each end, which makes it six. Says the bishop further, but I'm sure disagrees. He says, Oisa shall maidam. Shimon says, I believe that they used to bury more people inside in these cemeteries. In fact, the length of the wall was eight amas. If the length of the wall was eight amas, then you can put four. And the and the and the width was six amas. So if the length is eight amas, you can put four kuchin. That's four amas. A gap of an amma in between each one is three, so that's seven. And then you have a half at each end, that's eight. So you have four on the right, four on the left, and then the back wall was six amas wide, that is three. So you have a, he would have eleven. 
but he actually had 13, as we'll see in a minute. Rab Shimon says, I said, Toycha shall maida sheish amas ashmen amas six by eight. You get 13. How do you get 13? We just made the calculation. You only have 11. Four on the right side, because the, the length is eight amas. Four on the left side. Three opposite. The oh, Now, so that's 11. Now, the Echad Miyamina Pesach, the Echad Minasmo. One on the right, an additional one on the corners. Now, first thing you might think, as soon as you walk in, it means. The, the wall with the entrance, yeah. There you put the cords. That's, but the Gemara's not going to be happy with that at all. So then the Gemara says it means on the back wall. You're going to have diagonally on the two ends. Is there, yeah, if you look at the picture here on the bottom, the second picture, you see the uh, diagonally you have two over there. So that's argument number one. Now, why the argument whether it's eight or 13? So I remember, and I can't remember, sorry. I don't remember where, but I remember seeing a long time ago the, that... The idea of Tanakama 8 is because the Oros of Machpela had eight people buried in Oros of Machpela, and therefore, the Cheshman of 8. Rab Shimon says 13. So there, there, there are, the Armad there were more people buried in the Oros of Machpela. So maybe Rab Shimon holds there were more that that, that, that was a Cheshman of how many were buried. And also, don't forget, you have Aesop's head. Because you have Aesop's head, you only have a part. So those are the diagonal ones. You know, the, um, you make, I guess, two angles to even it out. But that's because of Asa's head. So, um, Mishnah continues. Another argument, and that is as follows. How many crypts do you have? Okay, this is how, if you look in the picture here, in the first picture in the Rajbam, you see there's a, a courtyard in the middle, because you have to have where you stand. Area. and then Exactly. And then you go to the right, you go to the left. So basically, there are two, when you buy, I said, he says, I want to buy this crypt. What are you buying? You're buying a six amas chaser, uh, six by six, and then you're buying to the right an area to bury, and I'm buying a, a right in the left an area to bury, uh, and the right is you know four by uh, according to Tanakam is four by six, six long and four wide, and the left is six long and four wide. Rav Shimon is going to say, no, all four sides, all four sides, it'll be six by eight. So you get an area of six amas by six amas, and then you get to your right eight amas long, and to your left you get eight amas long. Forward, you know, all directions. We'll see. So the we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. That's what the whole Gemara is all about. So, but according to Rab Shimon, so according to uh, sorry, according to the Tanakama, you'll get um, the, the length of the area will be six amas of chutzah, six amas of a wall, six amas of a wall. You get an eighteen amma length of an area, eighteen amas length, right? Six on your right, six on your left, and six in the middle, eighteen. And then the width would be six and the width, and then you have four and four. So you get uh, you get um, six four and four, which is uh, fourteen. According to Rashi, what it should be is you get six in the middle, eight on your right, eight on your left, because it's eight amas long. So it should be a total of twenty-two amas. And the Gemara will discuss later. Bryce says I only get twenty amas, and that will be another discussion. The Gemara should be twenty-two. Okay, that's basically the discussion of the Gemara. And and but Yimmy just raised an important point. According to Shimon, how in the world do they work? Because they, they're all sitting on top of each other. Okay, as we'll soon see. Says the Gemara further. But oisa chotz up here maida. You make a courtyard in the maida sheish al sheish, an area of six by six where the people can stand. Can mole amita vekevra enough room to put the uh, the cup for this. <clears throat> and here we call amita, which sounds more like what you said now in order. And vekevra the people the levaya they'll be able to stand it. I mean six by six is not a very big area. I and mean, if you have a cup in there, how many people can really fit? A million. How many people have been in? And before we were said, talking about how important it is to have 600,000 people or those who line up from the gate of the city all the way to the cemetery. I will give it a little chutz. Now, this chutz, the big machlek, is showing him exactly how the chutz is. Where the chutz is above, is on ground, or the chutz, in other words, and they have to go on the stairs to get to the crypts. So the chutz is an area on top. You don't want to stand on top of the grave. So you get an area on top which is clear of graves. That's six by six, everybody stands. And then you walk down the stairs or a ramp and you come down to the kuch. That's one view. And the other view is, no, the chutz itself is depressed. The chutz itself is depressed. It's pushed down. And then maybe you go slightly further down to um, to the kuch. Okay, taking my further. Um, you have two, two sets of crypts. And from coming up the chutzah, after the kavanah, one on the right, one on the left. Let's say, and Shimon says, "Arba la'abru chutzah." Every side, so you can have a lot of mate. It's a big family, so you're going to have each one here thirteen by four. 
52 people could be buried according to Rabbi of Shimon and according to and according to Tanakama, you're only gonna have 16. Big difference. I guess small families or big families. Rabbi Shimon Gamlil, I meant Hakalifia Sella. Rabbi Shimon Gamlil says it depends on the stone. If it's strong stone, it won't fall apart. You can put more cooking in that in the area. But you can, you don't have to have a tough gap between each one because the the, the strong it's rock. But if it's uh, dirt. If you if you make it too narrow, it, the whole wall will crumble and then the cave will, you know, will fall on top of each other. And it's disrespectful. So then you have to follow this gap. So maybe sometimes, no, but he says there's no rules. Every so you got to get an engineer and come in and tell you how many kuchen you can, how many cabinets you can make the wall without the wall falling apart. Sometimes many more, sometimes less even than what we have here. Okay, says the Gemara. Tani Tele Shadi Shadi Lu. These extra two Rab Shimon is putting, where did you put them? Where did you place them? In the brai, if we place them towards the outside, in other words, the entrance that you're walking in, and 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 that's the area where they are, <clears throat> I have a problem. No, so you walk in on the left side of the door. There's one on the right side of the door. There's another one. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, but but where you're putting them in, you don't have um, you don't have any more space. You can't make any more cabbage in the walls. So obviously, you're putting them in under the chutz. In other words, you're standing there and you're putting them in under the chatzah, you're putting in a few, uh, you dig a hole under the chatzah, just like the kuchen are in the walls under the chatzah. Here you dig directly under the chatzah and you put in these bodies, these two bodies. The problem is, how come you you're stepping on it, people are standing on the chatzah, they'll be standing on these two graves. Because there's no room to put on the wall that you're getting the kuchen because if you dig another another cavity, the wall will cave in, right? There's no room there. We made a whole cheshven, an amma, an amma, nothing else. We put in these two extra ones. Obviously, it's not going into the area on the side, it's in the area of the chatzah, but underneath the chatzah. How can they be standing there for a long time? Even though um, it, it just walking, everybody's walking uh, through the chutz, and also sometimes they might walk, especially according to Abshimen, if it's on all four sides. I mean, Abshimen, all four sides are cooking to get to the chutz, you're going to have to walk over graves. But if you're just walking over, interesting, you're just walking over the graves is not a bazillion. We're not such a bazillion, or you have no bread, so it's not a bazillion, not such a bazillion. But if, um, if you're standing there, and there's a husband maybe there, or it takes time to move the, the beer and everything else. It's, it's a bizarre. How can it be that the mason are buried under the So where do these two mason come in? Where they come in? The super remote. Now we learn We also learned that the the of his cave area is time is time. So clearly that there's no bodies there, nothing there. <clears throat> now, even though we said before, what's the problem? We said before that there's a, the at least learned that there's a, the reason why there's a tefah gap is to contain the tumas. So what's wrong with standing on the chutzah? The one thing, bazillion, okay, still bazillion, you're standing on top of a grave for a long time. No, no. But if it's tumor, tired, what's the problem? Because even though Pesach tefah is tired, that's only my tired. The Rabban is still asr. So therefore, it's tummy. But here it says tired, it must be there's no graves at all. But where do they put them? You know where they put them? <laughs> like like a bolt, vertical. They took here, yeah, they took two, and instead of making it horizontal, they made them vertical, so they're on the corners vertical. So they're not in the very corner. And nobody's standing in the very corners of the of the hut. Well, they're all avoided. They're told don't stand next to the body. uses an expression, hizu, to bury somewhere vertically is a kavura of that's how you bury your animals. That's how you bury human beings. Like yeah, exactly. Just toss them in. This is not macabric, not edifying. The Digmar, the Rabbi Echel, according to Rabbi Echel, you know how he understood Rabbi Shimon. The Ovid Luhu Bekeren Zaviz. He made them in a corner. If you look in the picture here on the bottom, at the Rajbam here, you see how the two diagonally, you made them sticking out there in the corner, one on the right. It's a diagonal, you know, it's a back wall. So you had three in the center, and then you have a you know a, a gap of a half a tefah to the right, and then a half a tefah going down to the long wall, and that's what we stuck in another one of these. Gemara says it's not happy. Says the Gemara, in that case, they're touching. What do you mean they're touching? Because since there's only a half a tefah to the right of the back wall, and a half a tefah to the north on the long wall. Right, it's a, it's a tefach, and you need a gap. But if you're going to put another amma wide thing there, that means this amma wide is touching the base, the beginning of of this kuch, 
the beginning of this kuch and the wall is going to fall apart. It, the whole idea is to keep each cavity totally separate from the next one. But here you stuck one right in the, mid, in the middle and it's contiguous, it's touching. Both kuchen. How's it possible? This is what you were saying before. Who said they're all the same level? But mama, you dig deeper. So let's say you have a wall. You know, the chutz is down there, is depressed in the ground, four amas, let's say four amas down the ground. So you have a wall. Um, and you'll have one amma above the ground, you're going to put these two diagonal. And then an, an amma above that is we're going to build all the other kuchit. Remember we said before, we need an amma space with, you know, an, an amma height or, or seven talking height. So you keep that distance there. So the walls are, 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 are very strong and you're not, you're not crossing over. So mind me, they're levels, they're layers. So you know, and I'm going to ask you, but you. If that's so, let's look at Rab Shimon. Our Bemayr Rab Shimon, how in the world do you look at the picture of Rab Shimon on the, on the previous page? How in the world do you, do you make all that happen? Look at this. If you look at the picture on the other page, if you're going to have one on the right and one on the front, the, the, the one on the right has, you know, Let's say, according to Shimon, four on its long wall. The one up front has four on its right wall, and they're all t- they're all crossing each other. How is it possible? It must be the le- the levels. This is higher. This is lower. So therefore, they're able to to be there at the same time. That's what Abashi says. El the only way to understand Rav Shimon is that levels. How can I be that levels? Comes along Rav Hunder Brei and says. It's 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 okay to not a response to Ravashi because Ravashi would have been very very young in the times of Rabbi Yehuda Yeshua. Remember, Ravashi was born when Rabbi passed away. Rabbi Yehuda Yeshua and a papa were the main Talmidim of Rabbi. So you have to assume Ravashi was very young. So Rabbi Yehuda Yeshua happened to be saying this. That may be a response to Ravashi. Omar Rabbi Yehuda Yeshua says, "Alba Mai of Shimon." I can how I understood of Shimon doesn't necessarily mean that there were levels. Now why the Abu Luki Charusa? I made them like, you know, you have a lulav uh, when it dries up. They're all diagonal. If you look at the picture here on the bottom, you look at the picture number Gimel in the Rajbam. You see over here, instead of being straight lines, they're all on angle. They're all diagonal. So if you're all diagonal, you can have, you know, f- uh, four. If you go to the to your crypt on the right, you have four there. And then you go to crypt straight forward, you have four there. That's what he says. Now, which in logic is impossible because you have to have an amma in between. Remember, it's only eight, it's eight ammas long and eight ammas this way. You have to have uh, four ammas and an amma gap in between. And uh, how does it all fit in into a square? You know, the, the top two are sticking all the way out of the square. The, the, the ones on the right are sticking all the way out of the eight ammas long wall. But apart from that, the Gemara says, is, is a bit difficult to understand. Mehdi, let's understand. Call Amos, a Biribua, Amos, a Betrechumsha. We know that every Amma, if you make it the angle of an Amma, it's one or two fifths, or roughly like pi, 3.141 one and four, so on and so forth. It's roughly one or two fifths. So if you have straight lines of eight Amas, the diagonal of eight Amas would be one and two fifths of that, which is 11 and a fifth. And yet, if, if you have um, in, in this area, in 11 two fifths, and you're going to have here, uh, 16 amas. You're going to have eight, basically you have here eight uh, cavities with an amma in between each one. So that's another seven, that's 15, plus the half amas at the ends. So you have how in the world do you put 15 amas in an area that's uh, in, 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 diagonally in an area that can only contain 11 and a fifth amas. Eight in an area of eleven. How can it be? So we go back to what said. There were layers. There were layers. So it's not a problem. So just like there were layers, of course, Shimon, you know, the one on the right, the one on the front. So too, those two sticking out. Then also were layers. They were not on the same level as the three kuchen on the back wall. Or he by saying, I can answer another answer. Those two on the back wall, you want to know those two little and how they didn't, uh, you know, interfere with other ones? We're talking about, you know, Shishma David in Tamar's Gemara, Shabbos Gemara, Ben Nefil. We're talking about they were um, miscarriages. And miscarriages are tiny. So they were built for them tiny little coffins. And because of the tiny little coffins, you have to make only a very small hole. We don't even have the exact measurements. It's not, it's not the full whole armor and all that. Because of the tiny holes, you can have. So that's where they buried. Then the, the, the following, they buried them the back wall on, the, on the, the, and these angles, and it didn't fit because they're very small. 
Now we learned possibly a little bit of this. We we'll learned um, the following Mishnah, and then in Shabbos Gemara we'll analyze the Mishnah all the detail. But tell us, Hamaytze mess. If you found a corpse, Mushkiv Kedarka. Now they did it like this: If you have a base of quarters, then you can't move. You can't move it once you bury someone. You can't move them away. There's all kinds of shilos we have. You know, valid reasons what happens, what do you do? A lot of people want to, let's say, eventually go to Etch's Row, be buried at Etch's Row, but it takes time to get the process of the papers. So when they put them in the ground, they make a tonight. You're only here temporary. Because if you don't make that tonight, the mess is clean as McCrame. It's, it's totally unedifying to move the mace. Then the Shiloh, sometimes you have to move it for other reasons. You know, what do you do? I might say mess. Mushki, you found one corpse lying there on the ground. Now, if you find only one corpse or two corpses, then it could very well be it's not um, a cemetery. The person fell down and people forgot to take it away. So he wasn't clean as McCoyme. They Maybe they didn't put it down there permanently. The guy, whatever, passed away on his own. Somebody found it and put him down there. So therefore, then you say, nightly, you can take the mace and bury properly, in a proper, give a proper burial, and as to Sussex. What we do is we give not only the mace, but we also give the the, the soft sand around because there might be some of his blood on that. So we take all that with it. Shnaim, if there were two corpses, the same thing. We say it's not a cemetery. Neutlin the estusos. Or the motzah shloisha, you found three. Now three, according to um, the Tanakama, was kuchin because on one wall you have three. I were the other corpses. Maybe they were they, they collapsed, and who knows where they ended up. But to find three next to each other, it sounds like this is a cemetery. And it's a cemetery, um, you have to leave it there. But if it's a cemetery, how do we know it's a cemetery or not? So we have the rules of kuchin. According to the Tanakama, it's, it's it's six amas from one end to the other end, and uh, and really it's not six amas because you have a half an am on both ends. So from the first mace to the last mace is really five amas. And according to Rav Shimon, it's eight amas long for four. So three would be a little bit less, and, and, and but within an eight amas area. Matzah Shle, you found three. Im yesh beinein me'arba v'ashmoina. If between them there's four amas, up to eight amas, harei d'shchun recover. This is the kvaris. This is called a cemetery. Now, if there's going to be a problem, because according to the Kama, eight is already not a cemetery. It has to be within six, within think. And if it's... um. Rab Shimon, Rab Shimon says it's it's six by eight, not uh, <coughs> not uh, four. What's in other words, if it's four, it might be the back wall. If it's uh, eight, it might be the right wall. So who, which one is it? Because according to Rab Shimon, the back wall was six was uh, six amas wide. No, according to Rab Shimon, the back wall was six amas wide. Here you found four amas wide. Sounds like the Tanakama. But the the length of the wall according to Tanakama is only six, and here you say it's eight. Four to eight. So we'll discuss all that. Ubaidik mi men o lahawat esimama. And now, once you if once you found three bodies and you establish that this is a cemetery, remember we learned there might be another one on the other side. So therefore, we'll go twenty amas the other side. And this is also a problem. Kurantanakama, you only go eighteen amas. Remember, the length of the wall is six. The length of pass of the other wall is six, and then the chutz is six. A total of eighteen. Why are you going twenty? It's too far. It's no longer part of this uh, kuch. If it's the Rav Shimon, it should be 22, right? Because eight Amas here and eight Amas on your left is 16 and the Chatz are six. So if you found that there's a, a base of quarters on your right side, and maybe the bodies were pushed, so what you, where the end was in the beginning, it should be 22 Amas. Plus, what about all the other directions? Especially Rav Shimon, or all the other directions. And plus, how do you know to go to the left? Maybe what you found there in the cemetery is the right. So you got to go there. You got to go... If you go a lot of places to exhaust all the possibilities. Okay. Matzah echad v'seif esimam. You found a lone corpse. The end of 20 amas. Now, normally you found a lone corpse. You do. You just take it. The esfusase. But in this case here, could be it's part of the cemetery. But then you say to yourself, how do I know it's part of this cemetery? Maybe it's part of another cemetery. So therefore, you have to now go look another 20 on the left of that. Shiraglayim um, the now, once you've established that there's a cemetery here, then you have grounds to say maybe there's another cemetery. If you only found that long corpse, much if you only found that long corpse, you would take it and the sand around it. But now that you found more than just that long corpse, you found the you established there's a 
uh, a crypt over here. And now you found some 20 amas there were saying maybe it's a continuation, maybe it's another cemetery. Could people, let's say, generally have cemeteries near each other? So uh, you have to continue searching. That's the general Mishnah. And then the, the Gemara and, and Shabbos is going to work out this Mishnah who follows Rab Shimon or the Chachamim and how this whole thing. See, there's a third opinion. Okay, we'll stop here. Everyone should have a single chsiv teva, a good ben shor, a shon teva masuka. Should be tears, nas pidyan hashkuyim. Starting from that, psiches oitzes, all the good, all the good brachas, all the shteves that we can think of, and nochmer, even though we can't think of.